Welcome to the Architecture Woodshop and Digital Fabrication Lab on the Marietta campus of Kennesaw State University. This video is about the sliding compound miter saw. This video will cover what the saw is best used for, an orientation of the saw and how it works, how to use the saw safely and effectively, and what the significant safety concerns are related to using the saw. At the end of this video, you will know how to safely use the sliding compound miter saw to make different types of cuts on different sizes of material. A sliding compound miter saw is used to cross-cut material. Cross-cutting material means to cut a longer piece of material across its narrow dimension, usually into shorter lengths. If you're cutting wood, a cross-cut would cut across the grain of the wood. The sliding compound miter saw can be used to cut material straight across, at an angle, or at a compound angle, which is a combination of two angles. Sliding compound miter saws are commonly used by trim carpenters to cut angles of trim and moldings, such as crown molding. The sliding compound miter saw can be used to cross-cut or miter the following materials wood and wood-like products such as MDF and particle board, PVC is approved, and plastic can also be cut on the sliding compound miter saw, although the table saw is probably the better option. Metal should not be cut on the sliding compound miter saw, and that includes aluminum. If you have questions about the material you want to cut on the sliding compound miter saw, please ask a staff person first. Now we're ready to take a closer look at the sliding compound miter saw. The position of the blade on the sliding compound miter saw can be adjusted in two different planes. One plane is defined by the position of a rotating table that can be locked into place at different angles to the fence. This plane is referred to as the miter angle. The other plane is defined by the position of the arm that holds the cutter head. This plane is referred to as the bevel angle. So when you make a cut with the sliding compound miter saw, you're making a cut that's defined by two angles, the miter angle and the bevel angle. You can either make a cut straight across, cut at an angle, or cut at a combination of the two angles. If both the miter angle and the bevel angle are at 90 degrees, then the cross cut will be made straight across the material. If either one of the miter angle or the bevel angle is set at 90 degrees, but the other is set at an angle other than 90 degrees, then you're making a miter cut. If both the miter angle and the bevel angle are both set to an angle other than 90 degrees, then you're making a compound miter cut. Let's take a minute to point out some of the key parts of the sliding compound miter saw, what they're named, and briefly what they do. The on-off trigger switch is located in the handle. The hold down pin latch keeps the cutting head locked in the down position. If the head won't raise up, pull this pin out to unlock the cutting head. The lower blade guard covers the blade when it is lowered and swings out of the way when the saw is used to make a cut. When tightened, the slide carriage lock knob keeps the carriage locked in place. When it is loosened, it allows the saw to slide. The miter handle is used to move the miter table to different miter angles right and left. It can be screwed in to lock the miter table at a unique angle. The quick cam miter table lock is the mechanism that locks or unlocks the miter table, enabling different miter angle setups. The positive stop lock lever uses detents at several frequently used angles like 45 degrees, to set and lock the miter table to those angles. The bevel lock handle is the mechanism that locks and unlocks the bevel angle of the saw. 
It is important to properly set up the sliding compound miter saw. For users, setting up the sliding compound miter saw means the following. Adjusting the miter angle if needed. Adjusting the bevel angle if needed. Positioning the material to be cut in the correct position to make the desired cut. Then securing the material so that it does not move during the cut. Angle adjustments to the miter or bevel angles are the only adjustments that you will need to make to the sliding compound miter saw. If you feel that other adjustments need to be made to the sliding compound miter saw, please ask a staff member to check on the situation and make any necessary adjustments for you. If you change the miter angle or the bevel angle of the sliding compound miter saw, it should be returned to 90 degrees in each of those directions when you are finished making your cuts. Remember that we want to collect dust at the source whenever possible. Turn the system on before and off after using the sliding compound miter saw. That is, if no one else is using the dust collection system. Open the system blast gate before and close the gate after using the sliding compound miter saw. Significant safety concerns when using the sliding compound miter saw are the following. When making adjustments to the miter or bevel angles of the saw, be careful not to grasp the switch handle in a way that you could trigger the saw on accidentally. After the miter and or bevel angle of the saw have been adjusted, with the saw off, check to verify that the saw does not encounter the sliding fence as it moves through its cutting path. You must maintain control of the material you're cutting at all times. When cutting on the sliding compound miter saw, the material must be held firmly against the table and the fence. If it is not, the motion of the saw blade will pull the material against the fence possibly causing you to lose control. You should not let your fingers get within two inches of the blade when cutting. Be particularly careful when cutting angled cuts as they can significantly change the position of the blade. Make sure the blade is not contacting the workpiece before the blade is turned on. Allow the motor to come up to full speed before starting a cut. Do not force or rush the cut. Let the saw do the work. After completing the cut, release the trigger and wait for the blade to stop before returning the saw to the raised position. Make sure the blade has come to a complete stop before removing or securing the workpiece, changing the workpiece angle, or changing the angle of the blade. Let's see these principles in action. Before using the sliding compound miter saw, you need to make any adjustments needed to cut at the desired miter and bevel angles. You also need to determine whether the saw will be used in chop saw mode or in sliding saw mode. In order to adjust the miter angle on the sliding compound miter saw, do the following. Lift up the quick cam miter table lock to unlock the table. Lift up on the positive stop locking lever and move the turntable with the handle to align the indicator to the desired degree measurement. Then lock the table into position by pressing down on the quick cam miter table lock. The sliding compound miter saw cuts more precisely if the motor is in a vertical position. That is, the bevel angle is set to zero degrees. Therefore, the bevel angle should not be changed from zero degrees unless absolutely necessary to cut either a compound miter or to cut a miter on a board that is too wide to cut vertically and too long to safely cut on the table saw. If you need to adjust the bevel angle, please ask a shop staff person for assistance. In order to adjust the bevel angle on the sliding compound miter saw, do the following. Unlock the bevel lock handle. Tilt the cutting head to the desired angle as shown on the bevel scale. The blade can be positioned at any angle from a 90 degree straight cut, which is zero degrees on the scale, 
to a 45 degrees left or right bevel. Then tighten the bevel lock handle by pushing down to lock the cutting head in position. Once the saw has been adjusted to a setup with the desired miter and bevel angles, it is time to determine if the saw should be used in chop or slide saw mode. If the material is narrow enough, the saw can be used in chop saw mode. In order to make this determination, place the material in cutting position on the table and against the fence. With the saw off, lower the blade against the material. If blade contact with the material is made behind the center of the blade, between the center of the blade and the fence, the saw should be used in chop saw mode. If the material is wider, the sliding saw mode will need to be used. If blade contact with the material is made at the center of the blade and that contact is behind the close edge of the material, then the saw should be used in sliding mode. Keep in mind that in order to cut safely using the sliding compound miter saw, first contact between the saw and the blade should be at the close edge of the material. The saw should be able to make the complete cut using the cutting teeth on the portion of the blade that is between the bottom center of the blade and the fence. The blade motion in that section of the blade, along with the tooth angle, is designed to push the material down and away from the user when it is being cut. For 90 degree crosscut operations on small workpieces, slide the cutting head assembly completely toward the rear of the unit and tighten the carriage lock knob. Verify that the position of the cutting head is the zero degree bevel position and that the bevel lock handle is locked. Verify that the position of the table is the zero degree miter angle and that the table is locked using the quick cam miter table lock. Position the workpiece on the table and against the fence. Use a hold down clamp attached to the base whenever possible. Pull the trigger turning on the saw. Lower the blade by pushing the handle down into the workpiece with slow and even pressure. When the cut is complete, release the switch and allow the blade to stop before raising the cutting head assembly. Slide cutting is the operation used to cross cut boards up to 12 inches wide. Note that the capacity for 45 degree miter cuts is reduced to 8 inches. Slide cutting is the following process. Loosen the carriage lock knob to unlock the carriage. Set both the desired bevel angle and or the miter angle as described, then lock into position. Position and secure the workpiece. With the saw off, lower the blade and verify that the board is aligned correctly to cut in the desired location. Then grasp the switch handle and pull the carriage forward until the center of the saw blade is over the near edge of the workpiece. Pull the trigger to turn the saw on. When the saw reaches full speed, push the saw handle down slowly, cutting through the leading edge of the workpiece. Slowly move the saw handle toward the fence to complete the cut. Release the trigger and allow the blade to stop spinning before allowing the cutting head to raise. When slide cutting wide boards, observe the following precautions. Never pull the cutting head assembly and spinning blade toward you during the cut. You could lose control of the saw. Also, let the blade reach full speed before cutting. It cuts much more effectively and cleanly at full speed. If you need to make several straight cuts of the same length, it will save time to set up and use a stop block. A stop block is a positioning aid in the form of a block that is clamped to the fence at the desired length of cut from the right or left edge of the blade. Material is then placed on the saw table and positioned up against the fence and the stop block prior to cutting. The following cautions apply to using a stop block on the sliding compound miter saw. When installing a stop block, be sure that the clamps are placed so that they don't block movement of material or hamper safe operation of the saw. 
keep sawdust cleaned away from the table and the end of the stop block. Sawdust from a previous cut or cuts can keep you from placing material firmly up against either the fence or fully up against the stop block. Sawdust should be cleared after every cut. Bumping material into the stop block can knock the stop block out of position. Place each new piece of material to be cut gently but snugly up against the stop block. Check the length of cut material or reconfirm the position of the stop block periodically. A stop block should not be used for angle cuts or small parts, as it might result in trapping material behind the blade which could turn those parts into projectiles. In order to make a cut with a non-90 degree miter angle, use the following process. Unlock the miter table by lifting up on the quick cam miter table lock. Raise the positive stop locking lever up. At the same time, grasp the miter handle and rotate the miter table left or right to the desired angle. Once the desired miter angle is achieved, release the positive stop locking lever, press down on the quick cam miter table lock to secure the table into position. Then open the dust collection blast gate, position the material, Make your cut. Then clean up the area. And close the blast gate. If you feel that you need to use the sliding compound miter saw to do a cut that involves a change to the bevel angle or a compound miter cut, please ask a shop staff member for assistance. When you use the sliding compound miter saw, you must leave your work area clean. Remove any offcuts or small pieces of debris from the work area. Then brush off the saw and the dust hood into the dust collection slot, not the floor, before turning off the dust collection system. If for any reason you think that the sliding compound miter saw is not cutting as it should, please notify a staff member who will investigate the situation. If you think that something other than miter or bevel angles need to be adjusted, contact a staff person. If you think that the sliding compound miter saw sounds or feels odd as you're cutting, contact a staff person. If you're not sure the angles you're about to cut are correct, contact a staff person. Thank you for watching the video, and we welcome you to visit us in the shop sometime soon.